Don't get caught paying more than you need to for a Disney World vacation next year. Today, we are gonna hit you up with our best budgeting and savings tips that'll serve you well in 2024 and beyond. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. Saving money at Disney World in 2024 isn't some sort of Excalibur or Thor's hammer, where only those who are worthy enough will be able to access deals and discounts. Anyone can use these methods and promos and hacks to shave down those price tags for next year, and the next year, and maybe even the year after that. So today we're gonna discuss some of the best ways to save money on your upcoming Disney World trip, no matter when it is. But before we get started, how's about a freebie to kick off your money-saving ventures? Go ahead and scan the QR code you see on the screen or head to disneyfoodblog.com slash Disney plans. And we're going to send you free Disney World planning worksheets with full planning timelines and fill in the blank travel itineraries. And of course, even more tips and tricks straight to your email. Okay. First way to save the cash is booking early. Really, this is the key strategy we've used to save money on Disney trips in the past, but this time we're using this strategy to avoid new 2024 price hikes that are more than likely looming on the horizon. Recently, we released a video covering how Disney World's gonna cost you thousands more in 2024, and we were not exaggerating. We're already starting to see prices creep upward for park tickets, hotel rooms, airfare, food, merchandise, all of it. And the best way you can prevent yourself from getting caught up in another crowd crashing wave of price hikes for 2024 is to think two steps ahead of the game. When it comes to ticket price increases, our friends over at allears.net have been keeping track of what ticket trends have looked like since the parks first opened back in 1971, and on average, the most Disney World ticket price increases have come in the months of February and June, with March and December in the third and fourth spots. Meaning, if you're thinking about booking a 2024 Disney World vacation and you haven't done it yet, you may want to book that toward the beginning of January. If you're not ready to plan your trip that soon, you can always wait for the spring season right before June. Another price hike wave you've got to consider is the potential for food and merchandise to increase all across the board. Typically, these increases aren't too hefty, usually 50 cents to a dollar change, but when said price hikes impact hundreds of different items like they just recently did, then that's still hundreds of dollars more than you were originally going to have to pay for these things in the first place. These kinds of price hikes don't always play by the same rules each year, but historically speaking, they usually happen sometime in January and October. In fact, just this October, we saw history repeat itself with price hikes that impacted hundreds of Disney food items and souvenirs and extras. Some of the things directly impacted by these jacked up costs included theme park parking, memory maker, character dining, annual passes, fireworks parties, and a lot of entrees, drinks, and snacks. While you may not be able to completely avoid price increases like this, because again, they can be unpredictable, it's good to over budget just in case they do happen. And if you want to attempt to avoid these price hikes, then booking a trip before October rolls around and the holiday season starts making everything more expensive, that might be the best route for you. Last minute trips can't always be avoided, but when you can, try to book your trip as soon as you know your travel dates, especially if you have to book airline flights. And if you're saying, but AJ, I'm waiting for the perfect discount to pop up on Disney special offers, deals and discounts page, before I book anything. I hear you and I'm proud of you. But even if a new discount or promotion is released during your travel dates after you've booked, you can always call Disney directly to have those promotions applied to your existing reservation. Or you can use a travel agent like our friends at Small World Vacations who will monitor all the discounts coming out for you. Disney authorized travel agents are often the first to learn of new discounts and promotions, which they can apply to your existing vacation without you having to take the time to call Disney yourself and sit on hold for a million hours. And the best part, these travel agents are free to use. If you're interested in a free quote, I'll link the Small World Vacations info down in the description for you. Now, the park hopper hype is real right now, y'all, especially after Disney's recent announcement. Starting January 9th, 2024, park hopping will no longer be limited like it is now, where you can only hop between parks after the clock strikes 2 p.m. Instead, you'll be able to hop to any park you want at any time of day, meaning sweet freedom. But don't let this exciting news lead you astray. Park hopping can be a great option for those who only have a day or two to spend in the parks, but if you've got the whole week ahead of you and you wanna see every little thing that all four parks have to offer, then getting a park hopper add-on is just going to be an unnecessary extra expense for some folks. Let me give you a little example. Let's say I was getting four-day park tickets for myself for the second week of June 2024, so that'd be a range between the 9th and the 15th. If I were to just buy the standard four-day tickets, my total cost would be $568.18. Yeah, already pretty pricey, right? 
But if I include the park hopper add-ons for those same days, which you have to apply to all your park ticket days, mind you, you can't pick and choose, that price automatically shoots up to $658.18. That's a $90 increase for just one person that you don't really need if you're getting a four-day park ticket in the first place. So no matter when you're planning on traveling next year, write out a list of pros and cons for the park hopper add-on and see if it's actually gonna be worth the cost for your group. Some people really like that flexibility and some people would rather have the hundred bucks back. Now this is one of our favorite tips to save money. You can remove the extras that you don't want. There's a way to make Disney World's fast food entrees and specialty cocktails even cheaper. Our mantra is don't pay for food you don't want. Quick service menus usually just automatically include side items and the prices automatically reflect those extras. So if you don't really feel like having fries with your cheeseburger or chips with your waffle sandwich, ask a cast member if there's an entree only price. You may be able to knock off the extra cost of those fries or those chips when you order the entree with no sides. This is also a tactic you can use on those fancy cocktails you're ordering. Some lounges and quick services will let you order specialty drinks minus the glow cubes or specialty cups to knock down the price by a couple dollars. We've done this in the past with drinks over at Nomad Lounge at Disney's Animal Kingdom, when asking for the Annapurna Zing without the glowing lotus flower, and Tambu Lounge at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort when asking for a Lapu Lapu without the giant pineapple. Though I must say the pineapple does make you feel very tropical, so I understand getting it for the first Lapu Lapu, but maybe not the second. Now this may not always be a strategy that you can use for every drink or quick service meal, but it never hurts to ask and check just in case. Our team that's in the parks all day every day, they save a ton of money this way because they don't usually need all the side dishes. They just want the sandwich and they got to eat it on the go so they can do their job. Now, while you might already know that annual pass holder and DVC member discounts exist, you may not know that other folks can be eligible for similar discounts off of hotel rooms and tickets and vacation packages and other Disney World vacation expenses is two. And this time you might actually fall into that discount category. On the special offers, deals, and discounts pages, savings opportunities often pop up for people who are Disney Visa card holders, U.S. military members, we're going to talk even more about this later on, and Disney Plus subscribers too. We're also seeing new discounts pop up for guests who want to invest in a season pass for Disney's water parks, which include Disney's Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach. Season passes are $79 plus tax and are good from now up until May 24th, 2024. To put it in perspective for you, a regular single day water park ticket is $69. So if you plan on going to the water parks even twice during that time period, the season pass is gonna pay for itself. And even if you don't plan on getting the Disney dining plan for your 2024 trip, you may still be able to budget ahead of time for your meals with a Disney World vacation package. Only this time, Disney will provide you with the money instead of vice versa. The Disney dining promo cards are back for the select trips that you take for the end of this year and the beginning of next year. When you purchase a package that includes the Disney dining promo card, you'll essentially be getting a gift card for Disney food and only Disney food. Depending on where you stay will determine how much money you get loaded onto your gift card. For example, if you're staying at one of the deluxe resorts, you're looking at getting a gift card up to $200 per room per night. A moderate resort stay will get you up to $120 per room per night, and a value resort stay will get you up to $60 per room per night. But here are a few important factors to note about these promo dining cards. The number of packages available for this offer is very limited so the sooner you can book, the better your chances of securing it will be. A minimum four-day theme park ticket is required and a minimum four-night length of stay at a Disney hotel is required too. And this is one dining card per room, not per person. But even so, if you're booking a vacation package at, say, Disney's Wilderness Lodge for a five-night stay, that's still $1,000 in dining that you can use for the whole group. Here's one last little sneaky discount secret for you, and it all has to do with the annual pass holder discounts you're also gonna see on the special offers page. It only takes one pass to score those AP discounts, one. So even if only one person in your family or your group gets an annual pass, you could still apply hotel, dining, and shopping discounts for the whole party, just as long as you're the person paying for it. Meaning your fellow group members would have to pay their dues ahead of time or Venmo, Cash App, you, whatever's easy easiest, but if you're just a family anyway, then only one person has to pay. Now, annual pass holders also typically get discounts on special events and tours and can purchase multiple tickets at the time of booking. So if you're a pass holder and you book, say, the Keys to the Kingdom tour for a group, you'll still get that 15% off discounted rate for everyone in your party. The other thing that you could save big bucks on, or at least moderate bucks, is parking. If you're driving to Disney World and staying off property, you'll have to shell out $30 per day to park at the theme parks, but pass 
pass holders get complimentary parking with all pass levels. Score. Granted, you're going to have to crunch the numbers and figure out if the price of an annual pass is going to be less than or greater than the savings you'll wind up receiving, but if you're a frequent flyer to the parks or maybe even a Florida resident who has access to cheaper annual pass holder tiers, then you might find that the benefits really do pay for themselves when all is said and done. And don't forget, you can get one pass and travel on a specific week this year and then the week right before your pass expires next year so you can get two trips out of it even if you're only going once a year. Okay, next up is staying at one of those good neighbor hotels with extra benefits. Staying at one of the good neighbor hotels is one of our favorite ways to save money on future Disney World vacations since they give Disney guests an opportunity to stay in a room close by for potentially hundreds of dollars less each night, and the rooms can be much bigger. However, some new good neighbor hotels have been added to the lineup recently that'll give you even more opportunities to save more money, and we are obsessed with this. The Swan Reserve, for example, that's a fairly new hotel owned by Marriott that offers guests a luxurious stay that's within walking distance to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. It's got rooms with great fireworks views and deluxe Disney Resort perks, including not just early theme park entry, but also extended evening hours. Now, the rooms at Swan Reserve can still be pricey depending on when you're planning on visiting, but if you're a Marriott Bonvoy Rewards member, which you can sign up for for free to earn points toward future Marriott Resort stays, then you can use your Bonvoy points at the Swan Reserve to make your stay cheaper, or you can earn points during your stay that you can use towards your next trip whenever that may be. Bonvoy points can also be used on your upcoming Swan and Dolphin hotel stays too, which might be an even cheaper option for you than the reserve and still puts you close to the Epcot and Hollywood Studios parks, even closer actually, and gives you access to both early theme park entry and extended evening hours as well. There's also some great food in the Swan and Dolphin. But let's take things even cheaper and check out the new Drury Plaza Hotel. This is a Disney Springs area resort located about a half mile away from the shopping district. Unlike even Disney's value your resorts, you can often find rooms at Drury for less than $200 per night. While extended evening hours are not available for this hotel, early theme park entry is and free shuttle service. Not only that, but Drury is going to provide you with two free meals a day. That's right, two. The first is a free hot breakfast, which has your typical buffet spread of scrambled eggs and potatoes and pancakes and biscuits and gravy and several other options that you can feast upon before making your way out to the parks. And the second is called a kickback service that lasts from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m p.m. and includes complimentary bar service with hot food and cold drinks that change up daily but often include options like pretzels with cheese and burgers and your choice of a free mocktail or cocktail. Yeah, we're already pretty big fans of this place, but one thing I will mention is that you need to save to park here each night. Parking for hotel guests is still $25 per night per vehicle at Drury, so if you want to stay here to save some money, don't be thrown off by that expense. Now, what if I told you that you could potentially stay in one of Disney's newest villas for hundreds of dollars less than its initial quote? Disney's getting ready to open up two new Disney Vacation Club or DVC areas later on in 2024. These are going to be available for both Disney Vacation club and non-Disney Vacation Club members to book. And we're talking about Disney's Polynesian Village Resorts Villas. They are currently being constructed. It's a whole new DVC tower with hundreds of new suites that'll feature waterfront views and spacious balconies, kind of located right between the current Disney Polynesian Village Resort and Grand Floridian's Villas over there. And Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground are going to be redesigning their current cabins and transforming them into 350 refreshed and more modernized DVC cabins. But brand new DVC resorts are rarely ever going to be a steal of a deal, especially if you're a non-DVC member. So whenever we learn about what the price ranges are going to be for these guys, we're expecting nothing less than another round of sticker shock. However, staying in these new DVC rooms for the future could become cheaper if you choose not to book directly with the Disney website. If you want to experience DVC perks without flat out buying a DVC membership, which is very similar to a timeshare plan, you may want to look into a reliable Disney Vacation Club rental company instead. When DVC members aren't able to use all their vacation points for the year, they can choose to rent those points out to non-DVC members, and often they'll post these DVC points through rental sites like David's DVC Rentals. When you rent someone's DVC points, you'll pay only a portion of what you'd normally pay when you book through the Disney website, which can provide you with savings up to 30 to 50% off these giant villas. To learn more about the pros, cons, and major savings from these kinds of DVC rental services, be sure to check out our DFB video, The Disney World Hotel Secret That Could Save You Hundreds, right after this. 
Now, how about buying some new swag for less? Disney's t-shirt merch might be going up in price, but I know where you can find your new favorite Disney bounding attire for way cheaper. And that's through us, dfbstore.com. We got some new shirt designs on the site now, including Disney people are my kind of people, Alice inspired tank tops, Epcot festival v-necks, holiday long sleeve shirts and sweatshirts, and a lot more. So each design comes in customizable sizes and colors to make sure you get exactly what you want. Okay, let's talk about scoring discounted gift cards. So initially paying for Disney gift cards for you to use around the parks might seem counterproductive, especially when you're planning on buying them for yourself. But here's how you can actually save money by purchasing these gift cards ahead of your trip. You can reasonably expect to save between 5 and 10% on your trip just by using discounted Disney gift cards when you purchase them at stores like BJ's or Target or Sam's Club. BJ's offers a variety of discounts on Disney gift cards of different amounts, but members can typically get a $500 gift card for $480 or 4% off. Let's look at some quick math for a minute. If you want to book a stay at Disney's Port Orleans French Quarter for six nights from November 5th to November 11th, it'll run you about $1,983. If you pay for that with four Disney gift cards purchased with that BJ's discount, you'll end up saving yourself 80 bucks. And that savings can buy you up to 10 Mickey pretzels, AKA living the high life right there. Now for Target's red card membership program, you can make purchases and get 5% off. While this discount excludes purchases of Target gift cards, it does not exclude purchases of Disney gift cards. So if we're looking at the same Disney's Port Orleans French Quarter scenario, again, you can pay for that stay with four Disney gift cards purchased with the Target red card discount and save yourself 100 bucks in the process. Us. That savings can buy you six turkey legs, if that's what you're into, to each their own. And finally, Sam's Club discounts also tend to vary, but members can typically get a $200 gift card for $185. That's 7.5% off. Okay, one last look at that French Quarter scenario. With the Sam's Club discounted gift cards, you're going to end up saving yourself $150. That can buy you 21 pineapple Dole Whip floats, which might be a way more desirable outcome than the whole turkey leg situation. Now, even if you don't decide to use these gift cards to pay for your resort stay, you can still use them as a budgeting strategy to help pay for food and merchandise, maybe even Genie Plus during your visit. Now, to pace out your gift card payments, purchase a gift card for a set amount of money after each of your paychecks leading up to your trip. Then consolidate these gift card purchases into one card via the Disney gift card website to use and reload however you see fit around the park. Parks. That way you don't have to worry about paying for things with your debit or credit card once you're in the park since you'll already have all that gift card money saved for whatever splurges you want to make. And it'll all be on one gift card. You don't have to carry on 500 gift cards. Just consolidate it all on that Disney gift card website. Super useful. Now, have you ever heard of Shades of Green? No, we're not talking about different colors of green. We're talking about an actual resort on Disney World property that a lot of folks don't know about since most people can't book a stay here. Shades of Green is an Armed Forces Recreation Center, an AFRC resort, meaning that it's owned by the United States Department of Defense, but located in the Disney bubble. What's unique about this hotel is that you must be a member of the Armed Forces or be sponsored by one to book a room. The resort is meant to be an affordable option for service members and their families. So room rates are based on a scale that reflects a military member's pay grade. So for example, a military member who's just starting out in their career would expect to pay less for a room here than someone who's worked their way up in the ranks. And that savings doesn't stop at just the rooms. If you walk down the hallway from the resort lobby, you'll find the Exchange General Store and Gift Shop where everything, merchandise and last minute necessities included, is sold to guests completely tax free. Now, we might be wrapping up today's video, but you can learn about even more Disney World savings opportunities right now by heading to our 50 Ways to Save $100 video next. But before you head out, don't forget about our free Disney World planning worksheets that you can grab over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disney Plans. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.